Hi, Paul from Contemporary Synth here. In these tutorials, we look at the technical capabilities of this Roland Phantom O workstation and some artistic possibilities to let you take advantage of the technical capabilities. Today, instead of working on a song, I'm going to share five tips that I've learned through playing this keyboard over the past few months here at my house and at my church. So let's go. The first tip is going to be feeling the power. And by feeling the power, I mean these USB ports that are right here. These USB ports are meant for moving data to and from a computer or an external device. But when you're not using it for that, you can use it to power other things associated with your play. So I'll give you some examples of things I've used them for. The first is a USB powered fan. It gets crazy hot here in the summer and it's great to be able to put this on my table, hook it up and have essentially a switched outlet without having one more cord going to my power strip. Another thing I've used it for is a music stand light. Uh, this stand light used to have a battery, but the battery's dead. I can plug it in as I've done here, and I get power, and when I take it out, power goes away. So this is another peripheral that you can add with a switched outlet and get some power without running another cable to your strip. Uh, third thing I use it for is USB speaker. This does have a battery, but every now and then it needs to be recharged. Easy to keep the cable here and plug it in when I need it. And probably most handy is my phone, which I'm using to record as one of the cameras. But if you have an 07 or an 08, you can put the phone right here and then charge it when you need to. I set the clock to always on so I can see what time it is. I can use a stopwatch when I'm practicing for these videos and I can get those last minute texts when I'm playing live to hear that the bass player's gonna be late. Talking to you, Bob. All right, so those are four different things you can use to use these USB ports to feel the power. Number two, find your balance. And by balance, of course, I mean the output of the keyboard. Questions have come up, how do I plug a microphone into the keyboard and the keyboard into an amp or a monitor? So let me talk about that for a minute. Here are some cords that I use to do that. Uh, this is a tip ring sleeve output, meaning it's a balanced output. And balanced outputs have three pins on them, tip, ring, and sleeve. Uh, you'll call this, you'll hear this called TRS. Other balanced outputs are XLR, which technically stands for extended line return, but you'll never hear anybody say that. But it's exactly the same. Ground, pin A, pin B. This is ground on the sleeve, pin A on the top, pin B in the center. These two cables are acoustically identical. There is no sound benefit to using one over the other. There are some differences, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but you're either using two pins or three, and if you're using three, all the cables are the same. What's going on with the balanced signal is every chord, and most instrument chords just have tip and sleeve, and that's ground and signal. What that middle ring or second pin is doing is the sending device takes that wave and flips it upside down and puts that in the other pin. If the receiving device were to add those together, it would cancel out the sound and that would be dumb, so it doesn't do that. But that signal and inverted signal travel together through the whole cable run, and any noise or energy or electrical interference that comes in affects both of those pins equally. So when the sound or the wave gets to the receiving device, it flips that B pin right side up, so the signals now are aligned, and when they get added, they get a little boost, but the noise is inverted, so when it gets added, it gets reduced. Just brilliant. So because that balanced cable is less lossy and better handles the noise, you can put a lower power signal, which means lower level resistance or impedance. So you have balanced, low level, low impedance. And you'll hear that called mic level sometimes. That is a very pristine way of moving the sound from the keyboard to something else. You can still use a tip sleeve cable, just like a normal patch cord, if you're going to an amplifier or something else. Typically they say, or with the sites I've read, say if you're less than 10 or 15 feet, it doesn't matter. If you're doing a longer run, make sure you're using that balanced connection. The way I do that here is I have a tip ring sleeve that connects to the keyboard, and then I have an XLR that connects to my mixer. And it's not a long run, but I want a quieter sound because I'm recording. When I'm playing with an amp, I just plug in a normal tip sleeve cable. So this is a the most pristine way to connect your core, uh, your keyboard to the mixer. Some mixers have a combo input, which allows XLR or tip ring sleeve. So that's how you connect your 
keyboard to your mixer. Now, how do you connect your microphone to your keyboard? And that's really interesting because it says in the reference manual that this is a balanced input, which you might not know just by looking at it, and it's not labeled on the back. That means if you're coming from a regular microphone like this with an XLR input, you need to figure out how to go from XLR to that tip ring sleeve. And the way I've been doing that is I take this same kind of cable and I use a, an XLR coupler. And an XLR coupler just has two female sides. And I can go XLR coupler to the cord, cord to the microphone, and now I am microphone to tip ring sleeve. You can also, for like 10 bucks, buy a female XLR to tip ring sleeve cable. That would work as well. What you don't want to do, you don't want to buy an impedance matcher like this, or you don't want to buy a direct input box. Those go from low voltage, low impedance, balanced, to instrument level voltage, high impedance, tip sleeve, unbalanced. This is a converter for maybe plugging a microphone into an amplifier. You don't need to do this because this is a balanced low level input. That's something you may not have known. That's how you find your balance with the outputs and the inputs. All right, tip three. Everybody who plays with a, a portable pedal struggles with the pedal traveling around all over the place when you press it. I'm no exception. This is the pedal that I normally use. It's an M Audio metal pedal. To keep it in place, what I did was I loosened this top screw just a couple of turns, then pulled out the kite string from back in the day. Kite string is very thin and super strong, and I just tied a loop from one side of my table to the other, and then looped that over the screw that was here. The pedal pulls the string tight, but it doesn't break, and the pedal stays put. And I was able to use that with my spring pedal that I use for my effects as well. I did this at my church, and it worked perfectly fine as well. It looked ridiculous because it was a white string over dark tile, so maybe I'll color it with a Sharpie or something. But the first time I played, my pedal was all over the place, and after I did the string, it stayed put. There are a hundred ways to improve on that, so over to you, whether you want to create a ring out of a paper clip or some way to attach the string of the pedal, but if you need a way to hold your pedal in place, uh, string might be your answer. All right, tip number four, a change in scenery. This week, I was playing the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and I needed to change my sounds between the verse and the refrain, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm in a scene that I created, and I was using this one when I played. <coughs> I have four main tones that I'm using. My first one is an electric piano, uh, chimey, celesta kind of sound. Second one's a pad. Third is piano, because I'm still used to directing with a piano. And fourth is piano with some strings, which I'm using only a little bit, because we have live strings, and that's insulting. So. I had this nice ethereal kind of sound. And let's see, I'm gonna take this down a couple steps. So the song goes, until the Son of God appears. And then the refrain goes, rejoice. But for rejoice, I wanted to back these down and push up my fifth tone, which is organ. Get that, maybe with some piano. Get that nice powerful, rejoice. But there's no way I was gonna be able to make that switch while I'm playing it live without stopping. And I imagine some of you might have that challenge also if you're moving from a verse to a refrain or a frame to a bridge or a bridge to a breakdown or even just a loud pattern to a soft pattern, you're going to want to switch tones in the middle of the song without, doing, without using a computer or pausing. So to do that, here's what I did. I took this scene where I am now and I saved it. So I'm in scene number 49, I saved it as scene number 50. And then I went within scene 50 and I built the tone that I wanted and I saved it again. So now when I'm in scene 49, I get this nice, till the son of God appears, switch, rejoice. And that's what I wanted. But you might have noticed that while you're holding, and then it ends as, when I switch back, it cuts off the sound. So that's no good. To change that, I need to go into my system setting 
and go all the way down here to Scene Remain. You turn Scene Remain on, and now when I go over here, and if I play my last chord, the chord stays even after I've switched the scenes. Now you pay for that because now if I go to Zone View, you'll see I only get eight of my 16 zones, but that's all I've been able to manage anyway, so that's the price I'm willing to pay for this song. All right, something else I noticed now when I'm over here, it wasn't hard for me to go, Israel, switch down. But when I got to the refrain again, up here, I wasn't able to, holding this, I wasn't able to get over here in time. So I went to my scene menu and adjusted the switch. These switches over here. Now there's an easier way to get to those switches. Uh, hold down shift and press the switch. So I changed switch one to go scene down, which is moving it to the left, and switch two to go scene two, moving it to the right. So you can see scene down and scene two, or scene down and scene up. Sorry, those are there. So now within my scenes, I can go up and down like this. God up here, rejoice. Pretty cool. I actually found that even that wasn't usable going up. So I hold down shift and I press my control pedal down here and I made my pedal one assign to go up. And that actually worked for me. So now I can go down. God up here pedal. Rejoice. And then I was able to hit this to go back down. If I had a second pedal, I could probably set that up to go back and forth with the pedals. So a change of scenery, that's a cool way to switch sounds within a song using the switches, S1 and S2, or a control pedal to bounce back and forth. All right. Fifth tip is channel your energy. I was playing and I learned that the organ at our church has a MIDI input and I was experimenting with how you can control a second sound device using the MIDI jack and not the USB through a computer because I didn't want to set up a laptop. I just wanted to use the device as it was. So I have this old keyboard here. It's a Yamaha PSS 790. Nothing fancy. It is multi-timbral and that means you can set a different tone on each MIDI channel. So I'm going to set these tones over here and then show you how to control them from the Phantom. So I'm on channel one. I'll make that for channel one. Channel two starts with piano. Here's one, here's two, here's three. All right, so my goal is to be able to control those channels from here. Looking at my zones, I have these five already assigned. What I'm gonna do is go to zone, select zone six. Now this gets crazy confusing. If the light is lit, this is selecting. The light is unlit is there are enabling or activating. So right now I have selected zone one and zones one through five are activated. So that's what I hear. But if I select zone six and it is not activated, then zones one through five are not going to sound. Here's the part that's confusing. If you have selected a zone that is not activated, it plays through both the internal synth, the phantom and the external synth. So I'm now hearing this on both sides. If I only want to hear the Phantom, then I have to enable it. And now I get to hear all the other channels along with it. Let me turn those off. So this is Phantom only. If it's unselected, I hear both. And if I only want to hear the keyboard, I hold shift and press it. And now it goes green and it becomes an external signal. That's, that's hard to keep in mind, but unselected is both. Red is internal, and then green is external. And external is what I want. So let me select, make all three of these external. All right, and we'll go to that view. So you can see six, seven, and eight are now assigned externally. But I made these pretty tones, and all we're hearing is piano. And that's because it, the output channel defaults to the zone. 
So what that means is zone six defaults to channel six, but I can go in here and change that and make that channel one. So you can hear the different sounds. Here's a better way to do it. If, you, if zone is selected and you press shift, you can see all of them at the same time. So this, this should be channel one. All right, now let's pick this one. Just right now it's on channel seven. If I back it down. All right, and then make this one channel three. All three are selected, so now I can play some mix of them that I want. And now I can enable the rest, and I can create this cool sound that includes sounds from this keyboard and sounds from my phantom. And you can't hear it here, but it is really cool to have the sound coming from multiple sources. That sounds really fun. So you could do this with a second keyboard, you could do this with a drum machine, you could do this with another sequencer, you could do this with any other MIDI peripheral that you find. Set this to external, go to the zone view and change the output channel, and you can create this multi-instrument experience yourself by channeling your energy. All right, well, those are what I've learned so far. I will continue to share as I learn more. I hope you found these valuable. I hope this gave you some ideas. And if any of that is true, please consider subscribing, leave a comment, I'll see you next time. Thanks.